Hello everybody! Welcome to the Clark County Public Library Program After School Posse. My name is Miss Amanda and today I'll be reading a book and showing you a craft that you can make at home. Today we'll be reading Moonshot, The Flight of Apollo 11 by Brian Floca with permission from Simon and Schuster. High above, there is the moon, cold and quiet, no air, no life, but glowing in the sky. Here below, there are three men who close themselves in special clothes, who click lock hands in heavy gloves who click lock heads in large round helmets. It is summer here in Florida, hot and near the sea, but now these men are dressed for colder, stranger places. They walk with stiff, awkward steps in suits not made for earth. They have studied and practiced and trained and said goodbye to family and friends. If all goes well, they will be gone for one week gone where no one has been. Their two small spaceships are Columbia and Eagle. They sit atop the rocket that will raise them into space, a monster of a machine. It stands 30 stories. It weighs 6 million pounds, a tower full of fuel and fire, and valves and pipes and engines. Too big to believe, but built to fly, the mighty, massive Saturn V. The astronauts squeeze into Columbia's sideways seats, lying on their backs, facing toward the sky. Neil Armstrong on the left, Michael Collins on the right, Buzz Aldrin in the middle. Click, and they fasten straps. Click, and the hatch is sealed. There they wait while the Saturn hums beneath them. Near the rocket in launch control and far away in Houston in mission control, there are numbers, screens, and charts. Ways of watching and checking every piece of the rocket and ships, the fuel, the valves, the pipes, the engines the beats of the astronauts' hearts. As the count countdown closes, each man watching is asking the question, go, no go, and each man watching answers back, go, go, go. Apollo 11 is go for launch. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Ignition sequence started. Flames push hard against the pad, every second pushing harder. Six, five, four. But still the rocket does not rise. Mighty arms hold it steady. Hold it till the countdown fin countdowns finish. Three, two, one, zero. Lift off. The rocket is released. It rises foot by foot. It rises pound by pound. It climbs the summer sky. It rides a flapping, cracking flame and shakes the air and shakes the earth and makes a mighty roar. Armstrong, Collins, Aldrin ride the fire and thunder, pressed deep in their seats, their bodies are heavy as clay. The rocket below them sheds parts as it soars. Bolts explode, engines ignite. First stage, second stage, escape tower gone. The rocket flies lighter, 
the rocket flies faster. In 12 minutes time, it's 100 miles high. Then, after an orbit around the Earth, to talk with mission control, to check the course, to check the rocket and ships, the rocket's last stage fires again, pushing the astronauts on. And where the Earth has rolled beneath and rolled behind and let the astronauts go, the Saturn's last stage opens wide and releases Columbia, which was the rocket's tip. And also Eagle, hiding till now, a stranger ship, more bug than bird, a black and gold and folded spider. Michael Collins, Columbia's pilot, turns her back around and locks Columbia to Eagle. Then Armstrong, Collins, Aldrin leave the last of Saturn and travel on in their two small ships, joined together, flown as one. They go rushing into darkness, fl flying toward the moon, far away, cold and quiet, no air, no life, but glowing in the sky. On board Columbia and Eagle, Armstrong, Collins, Aldrin, unclick gloves, unclick helmets, unclick the straps that hold them down and float inside their small ships, their home for a week. Here there is no up or down. An astronaut can spin in air and turn a floor into a wall or a ceiling to a floor. Here on these sometimes ceilings, walls and floors, everywhere there are straps and screens and gauges, buttons, handles, hoses, and switches, switches, switches. There are food and clothes packed into corners there are flight plans, flashlights, pens and cameras, and they float too. They drift from hands and pockets. That's why there's Velcro everywhere for holding things so they stay put. Here where everything floats, it takes some skill to eat a meal. That ham sandwich, that ham salad sandwich, watch the crumbs. Soup, it comes in a bag, dry as dust. Fix the bag to the water gun, fill it, mix it, stir it up. Cream of chicken, not too bad, better than the peanut butter cubes. Here, where everything floats, it takes some skill to go to sleep. There are no beds or pillows, no night or day. There is always, though, the hum of circuits, the whir of machines the thought of where you are, and the thought of where you're going. And one more thing, here where everything floats, everything, it takes some skill to use the toilet. It takes pipes and hoses and bags, and there's no fresh air outside the window. After a week, this small home will not smell so good. This is not why anyone wants to be an astronaut. But still ahead, there is the moon, cold and quiet, no air, no life, but glowing in the sky, glowing and growing. It takes them in, it pulls them close. At the moon, Collins says to Columbia, high above, a single circling soul, at the moon, Collins stays in Columbia, high above, a single circling soul. Armstrong and Aldrin leave in Eagle and take it low and lower. They have just enough time and just enough fuel. They have a plan and a place to land, a chosen safe site among the craters. Now friends and strangers in the distance, down below, stay up late, get up early, and stop as one to watch and wait. There are only small maps and models to use. There is no camera that can show the landing far away. But what strange sounds there are to hear, whistles, beeps, and static, strange new words, and quick clipped news of altitudes and speeds, 
leaping across the dark between mission control and the men who are taking the eagle to land on the moon, who are going where no one has been. Onboard Eagle, Aldrin calls out information while Armstrong steers the ship. They fly low and lower looking, looking for their landing site. But now Eagle, they see, has flown too far. They are miles from where they mean to be. And below their small and spindly ship, they see no level space, only broken stone and rock, only shadows and deep craters on the great and growing moon. Far from home and far from help, still steady, steady, the astronauts fly till time and fuel are running out. Then, there, clean and flat, not too far, 60 seconds left, Armstrong fires the rockets, Eagle slows and lower goes until a spray of dust, a bloom of moon, flowers up around her. Slow and slower, low and lower, low and lower, landing. And far away, where friends and strangers lean to listen, where friends and strangers lean to hear, there comes a distant voice, Armstrong calling from the moon, calm as a man who just parked a car. Houston, he says, tranquility base here, the eagle has landed. Armstrong is calm, but on earth they cheer. Then Armstrong and Aldrin climb down from the eagle in heavy gloves, in large, in large round helmets, in suits not made for earth. In suits made for the moon, here below, all around them, cold and quiet, no air but life. There is life on the strange and silent, magnificent moon. Armstrong and Aldrin walk in rough, wide places. They step, they hop, as light as boys. They lope, they leap. In the dust and stone beneath their feet, no seed has ever grown, no root has ever reached. S still secrets wait there, the story of the moon. Where did it come from? How old is it? What is it made of? not green cheese. And up above the ash gray plains, the sky is pitch and empty, and all the stars stay hidden. That is how bright the moon is when you are standing on its face. But in that blank and starless sky, High above there is the earth, rushing oceans, racing clouds, swaying fields and forests, family, friends, and strangers, everyone you've ever known, everyone you might, the good and lonely earth glowing in the sky. When their work is done, Armstrong, Collins, Aldrin fly back together from the moon, which rolls beneath, which rolls behind, letting them loose, letting them go. They fly back together through the dark with pictures, stones, and stories, with secrets of the sky, with a view from home, from far away. Back to family, back to friends, to warmth, to light, to trees, and blue water. Back from the moon, they land with a splash. To warmth, to light, to home at last. The end. Now I'll show you a craft you can make at home. I made my very own moon rocks. You'll need one cup of baking soda. Mix in two tablespoons of water, some food coloring, and glitter. I made mine blue, but you can make them black or even gray or brown.
Thanks for listening. Bye.